What is going on ladies and gentlemen, Ronnie here from Speed Lab, here with another video. This time we're going to talk about aluminum versus steel rods, so it's a connecting rod topic. I have done a video a couple years back, um, I'm just doing another one more detailed and uh, just kind of talk about my opinion on, uh, you know, pros and cons, my opinion on each rod and why, why you would use one over the other. And essentially the design, so this is an I-beam, I-beam, pocketed I-beam, and that this is an H-beam design. They're both fantastic rods. It just, you know, the manufacturer and how the rod is actually processed and manufactured and forged. Um, but uh, steel versus aluminum. So why would you want an aluminum rod in your engine? And when is the point that you would want to move from a steel rod to an aluminum rod? Um, well, the biggest factor is going to be how much power you're making. So it's not really RPM dependent. It's not really dependent on anything other than how much power you're actually making. There comes a point that, you know, say on Evos, anything over 250 horse per cylinder kind of becomes overwhelming to the rod bearing and specifically the rod bearing that's on the rod side, not on the cap side. So what you have to think about is there's an enormous amount of combustion pressure pushing down on this connecting rod, which is essentially pushing down on the bearing, which in turn is pushing down on the crank pin or the crank journal to essentially create that torque and spin the crankshaft and the flywheel and spin your wheels essentially. So the more power you're making, the more you're stressing this out. Now, there's a lot of other factors too when we're talking about knock and detonation, especially at high power levels, you can easily blow this thing, you know, right through. And uh, when you have metal to metal contact, especially at that high of an RPM and load, you know, you fuse this thing together instantly and just chuck a rod out of the block. So on an EVO application, I would say anytime you're actually going to make a thousand horsepower, not just throwing out the number, you know, saying you're going to make a thousand horsepower, anytime you're actually going to make a thousand horsepower and above, so if you know you're gonna make a thousand horsepower, that's the time to switch to an alum aluminum rod. Now, the benefits of an aluminum rod and the cons of an aluminum rod. Well, the benefits is it's about 100 plus grams lighter. So usually 150, 180 grams lighter. And it's aluminum. So you guys can see it's extremely bulk bulky. And that's to make up for the actual integrity of the rod. You know, they're extremely bulky compared to the steel. But this is about 680 or 690 grams, and this is only like 550, I believe, the Vader rods. These are the V2s, I'm sorry, these are the V1s, and then he came out the, the, with the V2s, which, which had improved pin oiling. And now there's the V3s, which we already have a couple of sets, and we have one for the shop car, but we'll show you guys whenever he actually releases them, so I'm not supposed to show you guys. But um, essentially what this does is this acts like a shock absorber. So now the power that you're making essentially gets absorbed by this rod itself because of the material and so your bearing doesn't get hammered so this means that the crankshaft has less of a chance of cracking at the journals your bearings are going to last a lot longer your service point actually moves from the connect uh, from the connecting rod bearing to the actual connecting rod itself uh and of course you're going to lose a little bit of power because this cushioning effect what it does is it's you know takes some torque away so you might need a degree or two or a pound or two to make the same power you would on a steel rod which is something a lot of people don't consider but whenever you're at that power level it doesn't really matter because you're essentially max effort you know throwing all the boost it can but you can add it so um one myth is that the rod itself will stretch uh the rod itself will stretch when it's in operating condition but it will always contract this material is not going to just stretch, stretch, stretch until, you know, it hits the, you know, valves. But essentially there comes a time that this rod will reach its fatigue point And this is going to depend on how much power you're making, uh, you know, how, you, how you're decelerating. You know, if you're decelerating at 11,000 RPM and you just let off the pedal and you don't clutch in, you know, this, this, this thing is going to, this thing is going to fatigue pretty quickly. But in general, aluminum rod is known to not have a good uh, service life unless you're streeting it, which it very well could. But uh, in a drag race application, uh, it just depends on how much power you're making. Usually every season or you know, two race seasons, you're gonna replace your rods, uh, which is not a bad idea because at that time, you know, you're pulling the pistons out and you're you know, checking everything out. The steel rod, like I said, We'll make more power because we'll make more <laughs> it will make more power and the reason for that is it does not have that shock absorber effect so because you're not essentially losing power or essentially torque 
through the rod itself, all of it is being transferred to the crankshaft, which kind of has like a, you know, seesaw effect. You know, you're not losing the torque, so you're making a little bit more. I mean, this is marginal. We're talking about, you know, a degree or two or one or two pounds of boost will make up for this. But, you know, all that's being transferred to the crankshaft. So if you're making 800 horsepower, 850 horsepower, 900 horsepower, not a problem. You can use a steel rod. There are a lot of great op uh, options on the market. We like to use the Cali's Ultra Enforcer, Enforcer pocketed I-beams. So this is not an H-beam design, it's an I-beam design. It, it is one of the heaviest rods on the market right now, but uh, they do use the 716s. These are the bolts that you would find in a big block Chevy application. Um, there are 18M bolts from ARP. These are good for 11,000 RPM, I would say. We, you know, zapped uh, our car to 10.5 numerous times, not accidentally, but actually wanting to zap it up to 10.5. Um, and of course, another big myth is that um, the horsepower is dependent on what, you know, bolts you use. That's not the case. You can make a thousand horsepower, but you know, if you're keeping it below 8,000 RPM, you could get away with ARP 2000s. When you move to 625s, that's when you see, you know, 9, 9,500 RPMs, no problem. Even 10,000 RPM on, you know, before when we would use the uh, Manleys with the 625s or Carrillo H beams with the car bolts, you know, we have cars making 950, 980, literally zinging to 9,000 RPM, 9,500 RPM, not a problem. But the bolt is going to be the factor of um, what RPM you can run. And if you're trying to make a lot of power on an Evo and, and any four cylinder, you have a small displacement engine and you have a large turbocharger, you're going to need to spin that up to make the power because, you know, the turbocharger has to essentially be able to create boost. And by the time you're in that efficiency range, you're at that 9,500 RPM point. Um, of course, there's also the topic of rod to stroke ratio. Uh, which is another thing that's commonly uh, overlooked, I would say, not really misunderstood, but overlooked. And essentially, it's how long of a connecting rod you're running and what your stroke is. So on a 100 millimeter stroke on a 4G63 uh, with 150 millimeter rods, you have a terrible, I think it's a 1.5 to one rod to stroke ratio. Uh, and then there's the other extreme, which don't quote me on it, but I think it's a 1.84 to one, which is a 162 mil rod, 160, uh, I'm sorry, 162 millimeter rod, 4G64 block. So it's essentially six millimeters taller than a 4G63. And you're using a six mil taller, uh, a six mil longer connecting rod. So you're 12 millimeters longer than the 150, which comes in the 4G63. Um, and what that's doing and why those engines are known, uh, you know, to be drag race friendly, very drag race friendly, actually favored by all the Evo drag racers is because of that. I think it's 1.84. I think the one rod to stroke ratio, um, you know, you can rev it really, really high without side loading the piston really, really hard. So when you're not side loading the piston really, really hard. You don't really have to worry about the pins yanking out. You don't really have to worry about the piston cracking on the pin bosses uh, and the cylinder wearing or essentially cracking if it's, you know, at a really high RPM. So, you know, just a couple things to think about. Mainly this video was to just talk about aluminum rods versus steel rods and why you would want to use one over the other. Again, I would say to all my customers, I move them to the SPL 1000, which, you know, I say yeah, after a thousand horsepower, you want to move to an aluminum rod. Um, and of course you want to make sure you have the proper fasteners for your aluminum rod. So you, if you go to an aluminum rod and you have crappy fasteners, you're kind of still limited because if you're on an aluminum rod, you're zinging that thing up. So you want good fasteners in there. Uh, but the ser ser serviceability of it becomes, um, an, an issue. Um, if you're drag racing, it's not really a big deal because you're going to service your motor anyway. Um, so on a street car, stick to your steel rods, of course. Don't get carried away if you're making 700 horsepower and think you're gonna make 1100 one, one day because uh, you know, maybe you will, maybe you won't, but it's better to stick with something that you know is gonna be street friendly. We just recently had uh, one of our customers, Chris, um, you know, put an order in and uh, he's getting a 2.2 uh, SLR, so semi long rod motor. And initially he paid for aluminum rods, but then he called me and he's like, look, it's a street motor. What do you recommend? I'm like, well, if it's an actual street motor and you know, you're making under 900 horsepower, under a thousand horsepower, he wants 850. 
well, you should stick, you know, to the Cali's 153s. So, yeah, just uh, something to keep in mind, you know, just don't jump the gun because aluminum looks cooler and, you know, will take more power. It won't make more power, it'll take more power, but it also becomes your service point. So, I hope this uh, was informative and you guys took something away from it. Uh, again, I love these DLC coated pins. We always talk about these. These are all included in all, all, all of our builds now. Um, these specific pins, these are the H13s. This is a Gen 2 piston. Our new ones have the TP1 pins. They're a little bit thinner, so they're 220 wall. Uh, I shouldn't really call them thin because a, a TP1 pin 220 wall is literally like if you, you could run a slug and it still wouldn't be as strong as a TP1. So what we're doing is we're reducing the, you know, reciprocating weight essentially. And it's a little bit easier on the bearings. Um, you know, the, the more weight you can reduce while still retaining strength, it's beneficial. Your um, bearings are going to last longer. Your engine is going to wear less essentially. And it's just a lot less stress on the components. Of course, the DLC coating, diamond light carbon, um, this helps if there's any oil dissipation and, you know, the engine runs dry for, uh, you know, a couple seconds or whatever. This is going to, this is not going to fuse two parts together where if you did not have this, it would, you know, essentially fuse together. So awesome coating. Uh, same thing with our skirt coating. We've been running these dry lubricant coatings for a very long time now. Cold startups, whenever there's, you know, you leave town for two weeks or whatever, you come back, you give this thing a crank. You're not scuffing the piston or the cylinder wall whenever there's no oil on it because this acts like oil. So anyway, I don't want to drag this on for longer than I already did. If you guys have any questions, please drop it in the comments section below. I love engaging with you guys and talking with you guys in the comments. And if you guys have any questions, send a work request if you want to get work done here. If you want to get an engine built, if you want to get your oil changed, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, I'm working with a new editor. So from now on, the videos should be a little more entertaining and not as... Uh, you know cut and dry and no uh editing as it's been but uh most of you guys don't mind it so thank you guys for sticking around i'll see you guys in the next one